my friends, might I introduce you to the Mercedes-Benz C-Class station wagon. If you're interested in getting a C300 4Matic, well, you'll have to spend $47,400, which is more or less the same price as the GLC 300, but it has one major advantage. It's a station wagon. This is not just any C-Class station wagon, no. This particular example might be the hottest modern wagon of them all. Yes, it is a C43, an AMG C43, which starts at $59,900. Are you, I have goosebumps just looking at this car. It kills me, pains me in the reverse order to think that I have to return this in a few days. One thing I will not miss, however, and physically is the only thing I do not like, these faux tailpipes. I don't know why Mercedes insists on doing this. You can actually see the real muffler, I think, back there. Why? Well, I don't know. I don't like it, but that's just me. Anyhow, otherwise, good lord, is it ever beautiful? And the white color is lovely. Hyacinth red, or I think it's brilliant blue, would take this car up like another notch. Uh, but yeah, I did mention that my tester was a 59, uh, sorry, well, base price for a C43 is $59,900. But my tester is, as usual, considerably more expensive than that uh, for a number of reasons. It has a heads up display, it has a carbon fiber interior trim, which I will show you, which is gorgeous. It also has the intelligent driver package and has a combination of two ensembles that are a must on this car. One being the AMG driver's pack, which includes these 19 inch wheels, the most sublime steering wheel, Dynamica Alcantara wheel, wait till you see that thing. AMG performance exhaust, which is a must. And also tied into that is the premium package which adds a 10 and a half inch, sorry, 10 and a quarter inch screen and the Burmester audio system. But yeah, it's a station wagon, right? So this, this is what I love. Oh, you could, I don't know if it'll work. Uh, no. Anyway, that's probably just me not doing it right. I've had that problem before. It's a big trunk. It's only on paper 460 some odd liters. But there was actually a large cooler there before I made a little bit of a mess. Not in the car, but in the cooler. Uh, everything fits. Speaking of everything, wait till you see the inside. Okay, uh, also part of the premium package are these nets, which are unbelievably shades, whatever. Perfect for when the kids are on board. They have loads of room. In fact, there's a little bit, maybe two inches more room for my son's feet in the C-Class than the GLC. There, those beautiful Burmester speaker grills. Do you see that? Hey, let me zoom in for a second. Oh my G, wow. On the inside, everything is perfect in this car. Everything, everything, everything. Let's uh, just start it up because it's pretty warm. There is the sampling. This is $1,500 or part of the $1,500 carbon fiber package. It is stunning, absolutely gorgeous. There's your 10 and a quarter inch screen, which is equally beautiful. It's your typical gauges that you do get in most cars. Most older, I can't believe I'm saying that, older generation Mercedes Benz, after the A class, the GLB and all that, they have these incredible seven inch or optional 10 and a quarter inch screens. Another shot of that steering wheel again. Oh my goodness. The grip is even better than the look. It's in the thumb rests, everything about this car on the inside. The seats, extremely comfortable, multi-way adjustable, memory settings, heated, not cooled. And here's your dynamic select for the uh, drive modes. Your transmission settings, which is only drive or manual. There's no sport setting in, these, in this nine speed speed shift like the GLC. Your dampers, which are adaptive in this. We're gonna go for a little drive very soon. I'm looking forward to the very important AMG Sport, but in my case, performance exhaust and uh, you know, volume knob home. 
There's one thing I may not mention while I'm driving, uh, but this is actually fairly intuitive, the wheel and all that, but the screen is not touch sensitive when you're driving. Which, when you're using a number of apps, I was using Waze on my way here, on my little road trip, and uh, doing updates for my passenger, and I underlined that, my passenger doing updates, she had to scroll through all the menus losing, using the wheel. Anyhow, I've said way too much. I mean, look, look at this car. Oh, good lord. Anyhow, I can't take it anymore. I'm gonna go. I love the column shifter. I absolutely love it. I mean, I don't know why. Well, no, I don't care why Mercedes continues to use it. I absolutely love it, but it's it's in such stark contrast to everything else about the cabin, about the car. Anyhow, that's that's completely and utterly beside the point. The point is, as I tried to explain in my GLC 63 video, the 43 GLC and this C43 is perfectly balanced, neutral. Everything is on a level playing field. The GLC 63 had ah, gobs of power, but not enough damping. Had incredible brakes, but it couldn't handle, you know, the unsprung weight. So there was, there was something amiss or something too much. Something didn't fit in that truck. This, on the other hand, is, is on a scale that is as close to perfection as it could ever possibly be. The adaptive dampers, which you get with the C43, are actually comfortable and do that job of dampening. The roads that I'm on right now are generally quite rough, but it's really nice in here. In the GLC, it would be nightmarish. This thing has, like, call it a, a cushion of security or, or, or comfort. You can change that if you want, right? You got the variable modes for the dampers. You can do that too with the dynamic drive select. Currently, I'm in comfort, which is ideal for most cases. There's a sport, sport plus, but in sport, I eventually just turn down the dampers. So that's why there's an individual mode, <clears throat> which has me, sorry, in sport for the engine, uh, comfort for the dampers, powerful for the AMG performance exhaust, of course. There's also a slippery mode, which I guess is kind of like a snow mode, which I won't be using anytime soon, sadly, because I return the car soon. Uh, but all that to say is that this is a comfortable, quick, refined, poised daily driver. This can be used every day as it was designed to do. And it's oh so wonderful. Steering is lovely. There's, there's just a hint of feel that you're happy about it. The brakes are immensely powerful. Brake pedal travel feel is beautiful. And the nine speed, speed shift, automatic transmission in this one is brilliant. There is a mild delay when you're stuck in traffic. And occasionally it will kind of slip and drop into a lower gear, but it's really not that bad because ahead of it is a beautiful bi-turbo, twin turbo charged, three liter V6 that puts out 385 horsepower at 6,100 RPM and 384 pound-feet of torque from 2,500 RPM all the way to 5,000. So with nine gears, a constant flow of torque and a beautiful buildup in horsepower, this thing pulls non-stop. It'll do zero to 100 kilometers per hour in only 4.8 seconds, which is insanely fast. If you need to go faster than that, Get the GLC 63S. It'll do it in about a second less. But again, for, for a daily driver, and there's a lot of emphasis on this because it, it is an, it, it's a crucial element 
in most cars for today. Most people want to have that one car that can do it all. Haul everything, everyone, go fast, and and only consume, here, check this out, right? I'm averaging 10.5 liters per 100 kilometers. The power, and mind you, 10.5 because I'm loaded, or was, and while well, I did a lot of highway driving, and I don't typically, as I've mentioned before, stick to the actual speed limit. So 10.5, considering all this, is brilliant. The road right now, I, I wouldn't consider it really a road. It's more like, it looks like paved ruts is what they are. And on the inside, in these wonderful seats, it's actually quite comfortable. Very serene, given everything. This car is wonderful. In fact, I think it's my, I love the Volvo V60, but the, there's a level of, of, of um, adventure, uh, element, uh, uh, event, whatever, that the AMG has, that a V60 T6 can't match. Also, this is a lot more powerful and a lot faster. But uh, yeah, uh, the, the all road is, is wonderful, but it doesn't have that kick or that punch, although it is quite attractive, as is the V60 cross country. However, it is only available with a T5. The all road is only available with a two liter. Okay, I'm rambling completely. What I'm trying to say is that this, compact luxury wagon is epic i have again goose pimples just thinking about it just driving it just loving it so much and for the love of god if you're shopping and you're thinking you know you're shopping for a new car and you're thinking maybe just maybe a station wagon can do the job please buy one save a wagon today I just bought one a few months ago and I wish I could buy them all and save them all. Anyhow, but maybe collectively we can do it. You've seen how spacious this car can be. There's room for everything for everyone. I am absolutely in love with this car. I am seriously thinking I will put Mercedes badges on my golf sport wagon and return it. Hopefully no one will notice. This car's fat.